There have been heated discussions in the composer community since the score came out. Why? Because of this, entire soundtracks with one button. Does it make composing too easy? Is it cheating? I was provided with a review copy in exchange for an honest review, so let's see what I found out. Spoiler! The score is more than just a sample library, it's a learning tool. Massive colorful instrument palette, animated stories, and groundbreaking power tools to guide us from start to the end of our composition. What does it mean actually? Think about the score as an empty canvas with 10 slots. Each slot can house one of the 160 instruments from all sorts of genres and origins. Each of these singles can be loaded into one of the 10 slots of the score and then fine-tuned in what notes they play, how they evolve over time, and how they adapt to higher intensities via the mod wheel. They gave us 120 so-called stories to start with. Let's load up one story and see what happens. Okay, we hear a grand piano arpeggio some strings, harmonics as a textural bed, a harp, as well as staccato strings for some rhythmic drive. Let's play a chord and see what happens. And let's change it. So the story dynamically reacts to my input and it usually works best when I hold long notes and change notes like every two or when every one or two bars. This is pretty neat already. The left and right fader sides here show each instrument's volume from lowest to highest mod wheel position. This makes it easy to control dynamic range. This piano here, for example, starts already at a pretty high volume at low mod wheel position and it only gets a bit louder. But the low strings, the booms, the horns, and epic drums, they're at zero at the lowest module position, so we didn't even hear them at all when playing this. But as we ramp up the mod wheel, suddenly they will become audible. So if we play again like some chords like we did before, suddenly we have quite a dense and epic arrangement. Holy cow, this sounds already pretty good. It's a full arrangement on one MIDI track that follows exactly the chords and transition notes that I play. Not bad. Let's load up a different story. Each of the story, by the way, has also some introductory text, which really helps like, get a feel for the mood that it's going to convey. So this story tells us to play simple chords at slow tempo for maximum ambience. The browser helps you find the right genre and style for each story. And of course, you can create your own one and save it as a preset. Even better, these presets are saved as individual NKA files in the, the score folder. And you can easily share a story with yourself across devices or with your fellow composer buddies. Each of the stories has five parts that you can switch in between with the red key switches. An intro with reduced instrumentation at lower complexity. An A part. A B part, an outro, and a finishing note. Now this is great, it gives us a few big chunks that help us evolve our compositions over time. But of course, this variation over time is not enough to turn these stories into your own soundtracks. That's where the play tab comes in, because here we can see what every single instrument is playing in the story and we can change it. Don't worry, it's simple. As I said in the beginning, the score is not just a sample library, it's a learning tool. And learning from this play tab is one of its big strengths in my opinion. 
Each story is a carefully handcrafted arrangement of 10 instrument layers, both programmed over time, intro, main A, main B, outro and ending, and in intensity via the mod wheel. Seriously, play any of these stories and you will understand that the folks who created these know what they're doing. And in this play tab, you can see exactly what happens in the arrangement. And you can take notes on how to craft a specific sound or genre, how to layer instruments together to go for a certain color, how to layer synths with orchestra instruments, how to go for a fluffy romantic waltz, or like in this case, a dramatic warrior theme. You can learn which instruments play together and which play as counter melodies as a response to other instruments, which layers are processed and how they are processed to go for a specific style. The learning possibilities are endless here. Each instrument has its own row and you can toggle here to see the first five and second five. And as you click on one of the row, it expands. You can solo the instrument and see exactly what's happening. The gray bar is the note intensity with the lowest module position and the color bar is the highest. So the area in between is the dynamic range as I move uh, through the mod wheel. Here you can sequence the note that the arpeggiator plays with different note orders, including a custom one that you can set in the matrix here. You can set the playback rate and what happens when you press more than one button. For example, when you arrange big brass chords, maybe you don't want it to play all five notes that you play, but only the middle two or the uh, highest two. There is a lot to experiment here, but in a nutshell, I can change every single note that is played, so the score is not a loop collection. It's not some curated but ultimately unusable candies that I can't use because everyone else will immediately recognize it. They are suggestions for moods where I can see exactly what's going on and then make my very own version out of it. Or I can just play around with the stock stories to have fun. Yes, this instrument is serious fun. You can click here and drag your mouse up into your DAW to export the MIDI for each of the instrument layers, in case you want to double with other sample libraries without having to guess what's going on in the engine. Very nice. There's a chord studio that helps you add chord progressions with really useful editing options like inversions and bass notes to create slash chords. And they didn't miss out on more complex chords like add nine, half diminished and anything you want really. And you have a jam session where you can just go ahead and have fun. You can send the chord progression here so you can later on receive it in the leads patch when doing the melody. In the leads patch, you select your melody instrument, either one or a coupled blend of instruments. Again, there are curated ones that you can uh, browse here, or you can match them together yourself with the same volume handles as you know that indicate the mod wheel uh, dynamic range. <laughs> Now here's a crazy part. You can either sequence your own melody in a sort of mini MIDI editor. It works well enough, but I prefer the piano roll in my DAW. Or you can have it generate a melody for you based on the chord progression. You have some basic settings to instruct the algorithm like the root key, mode, major and minor, algorithm types like rhythmic if you want triplets, and the range that this melody should play in. Now this melody generation to me is something that blends together orchestral composing that we do in our DAW with modern producer tools that you would probably expect in a more like EDM or hip hop style of music production, more building block oriented pieces of composition. Is this new melody generator a new revolutionary way of creating melodies with one click that elevate your compositions to form stronger emotional connection with the listener than you'd ever be able to do it yourself? Probably not. But let me tell you one thing. This melody is not bad for this chord progression. 
So let's go back to these important questions. If you write a film score with best service this score by Sonnet Score, and you load a story, play a chord progression from the story with one click, go through the intro, main A, main B, outro and ending key switches and call it a day. You submit the cue, get rich and become a famous composer. Is it cheating? No. Because that's not really how it works. But seriously, if someone is looking for more modular, pattern-based music, you may as well create that music in an engine that's optimized for it. I can imagine tons of valid use cases here, like when you do loopable video game or mobile game cues, backing tracks to improvise on during your live performances, switching between the different parts of a true crime podcast story to match the tension. In VR or AR experiences, escape rooms, interactive art exhibitions, science centers or museums, the scores helps me get inspired with well over a hundred arrangements and I can have fun with it, analyze them and learn from them and edit, modify, adapt or even start from scratch and create my own. I can fire up the engine with a blank canvas and a huge sample set of instruments from all sorts of genres. Would I dare to press one note or one chord with a story preset and submit it to one of my production music publishers? Heck no! But would I consider getting inspired by an arrangement that has the mood that I'm looking for? Analyze what's going on, take elements and add new ones, or shuffle them around, blend it with other libraries and create my own sonic story with it. Absolutely, there's no issue with it. The score makes it very easy to create chunks of nice sounding music. And those chunks you can even chain together. The sample content of the instruments is pretty impressive in range, especially if you consider how lightweight and fast the score is. Now this comes at a price of what I would say sample depth and detail. This is an all-in-one scoring tool and as a side effect this means that your orchestral sections and sample patches usually are organized in high and low instruments and the legato is maybe not as smooth as they would be in a dedicated library like cinematic studio series or so. But they do the job and I love the diverse choice of word instruments, mallet and band stuff that I can mix and mingle with orchestral and synth elements. The overall sound of the stories in the score is what I would call snappy. It's tight and has great production value straight out of the box. The engine is powerful yet simple enough that I could understand it in a couple of minutes and going through the manual helped me understand every aspect of it easily. The UI is beautiful though I would love if it were possible to see all 10 slots without pagination. I think these stories sound gorgeous, but they also need something on top that you compose and add yourself to really make them kick off and add oomph and emotion to them. So is the score a sample library for you? I would say if you're interested in diving into these 120 stories and happy to learn something along the way, I would say yes. If you're interested in production music for TV or commercials or everywhere where this sort of like little cue candies comes in helpful, I would say yes. Do you want freedom to record your stuff yourself and have control over every single note with everything you do, carefully arranging all details throughout your composition, just the way that your inner voice speaks to you? then I would say probably not. The score is more like a spark of inspiration that hits you and then you turn it into something amazing. The score is currently available on both Sonos Scores and Best Services websites for 399 US dollars. I think it's heck of a fun instrument and this overview should give you everything you need to know if it is for you or not. I am curious about your stories. Join the Become a Pro Composer Discord community and send me a direct message. Send me over your NKA files so I can load your story into my score and check out what you came up with. See you soon.